What if I show you how to bring your drum sound from this to this? So today I'm going to show you how to mix drums using nothing but Cubase plugins. Hey, what's going on? Chris here from Mixdown Online. Now, if this is your first time here on this channel, feel free to subscribe and to click that notification bell so you don't miss anything. And for all of you, share and like this video. All right, so now let's jump into mixing drums with stock plugins. Um, now, I'm gonna be using Cubase, of course. Now, to put you in context, this is a song that I wrote with my friend Jimmy uh, that will be released soon enough. Uh, uh, we just started to work on one single and probably gonna write some more music uh, in the following months. Now, this is an instrumental uh, piece. And now that I started to work on the mix, I decided just to show you what I did with my drum mix uh, on this song. Um, now, I actually tried something new this time around, and that is to mix my drums by using Cubase plugins, nothing else. Um, and up to now, honestly, I'm quite surprised it went very well. And this is what I want to talk to you about today. So I'm going to show you my process, uh, what I do when I mix drums, and all the tools that I, uh, that, I, uh, that I used using Cubase. So hopefully that will help you out. First of all, when it comes to mixing drums, uh, a very important thing is to think as the drums as one instrument. Okay, instead of separate instruments. Even if we have like a bunch of tracks, uh, we end up mixing one instrument. This is the way I see drums as a whole. Uh, so the first step here on uh, what you have here on my, uh, on my mixing session is my drum bus. The drum bus is something that I use on every mix. I route all of my drum tracks into this drum bus. Um, then the first thing that I do uh, before starting to work on on the individual tracks is I add a compressor on that drum bus. I love to mix in compression. Um, so I just, at this point, I like to just blend things together and glue things together right away. Uh, so this is what I'm using as far as a compressor goes for my mix bus. I'm using the vintage compressor uh, directly in Cubase. And those are the settings that I'm using for the drum bus. Um, it's a two for one ratio, not that much. Um, I have a, an attack of 20 milliseconds a release at 55 milliseconds. Um, that's it, you know, it's a full, uh, the mix is at 100%. Um, and I tend to uh, get a two to three dB of gain reduction at the most. Um, and I just start my mix right away with that inserted on my drum bus. But before we get to this point, the even before doing that, uh, what is very important is to get a good balance mix of your drums to make sure you get the best out of your recording um, right off the bat. And then afterwards, you can start evaluating uh, what problems you're facing, um, what needs to be enhanced, and what type of drum mix you want to end up with. And from that point on, you'll be able to make the correct and the good decisions uh, and move forward with your mix. So let's have a quick listen of the balance mix that I have. Okay, now I'm just going to add the compression right away. Cool, I'm starting to get that vibe. Uh, then what I like to do is to add an EQ right away. So 
this is the EQ settings that I ended up with after my mix was done. Uh, I go back and forth with this. Now, sometimes I will start right away by adding some EQ to the general sound. And some other times I'm just gonna start by working on the kick, the snare, and blend everything together. Um, and then afterwards, add some EQ to, uh, to complement uh, the sound. So those are the settings that I have on this mix. Now we're gonna look at the individual tracks on the, the, the stuff that I did on this mix. Now the important thing is to always keep in mind the big picture. All the decisions that I made on individual tracks are always related to the big picture, meaning to the drum sound in general, to that one instrument. So what I'm doing on the kick drum or the snare has to sound good when put in context. So uh, let's look at what I have here uh, with the kick drum. Uh, first, uh, I have the I use the channel strip, which works very well. Um, I added a noise gate to just tighten up the sound a bit, uh, some tube saturation, and of course some EQ uh, with a high pass filter to get rid of the uh, subs, uh, the low end, and uh, also a cut uh, in the low mid section and a bit of a boost on the top end, uh, just to add a bit more of an attack. Now, this is the inside microphone, and this is what I have. Now, I also have a sub kick. Uh, that is a sample that I recorded years ago. If you wanna get that sub kick sample, click on the link on top or in the description down below so you get access to the mix down zone for free. All right, so now that's sub kick. Uh, if we look at what I did here, um, not too complicated, just a low pass filter and a boost at around 50 Hertz. Uh, so I just enhance the bottom end of that sound. Okay, now I routed those two tracks into a kick bus. Uh, which I use to, again, add a bit more processing if I need to. You know, everything that I did, I judged that I needed to do it to get to the sound that I wanted to end up with. Um, now, if we listen to the blend of those two tracks. Okay, now they work well together. So what I did here, I added a bit of EQ to uh, just add a bit more tightness to the sound and an envelope shaper to just add a bit more punch. Now by cutting out the midsection of uh, the combination of those two kicks, uh, I ended up with a more tight, a more tighter sound. And by boosting the highs, um, it just added a bit more attack. That's cool. Uh, now for the snare, same thing here. I'm using the channel strip, um, noise gates, EQ, tape saturation. I love using saturation on a snare. Um, I just love the, uh, the vibe um, and the warmth that it adds to a snare. Um, and the, as far as the EQ goes, I have a boost in the lows, a cut in the mids, and uh, this is what I ended up with. All right, let's listen to that in context. So far, so good. Now, I always do that. Every time I um, I work on the snare or a kick, uh, any individual tracks, I always, always listen in context because this is where I make all of my decisions. Now, for the overheads, uh, let's have a quick view of what I have here. I had to switch the phase over on the, the room and the overheads. Um, I have a uh, high-pass filter as well. Uh, let's open the edit channel window. All right, so this is what I have and a bit of a cut at 270 hertz. Um, let's activate the EQ. And uh, for the, the room, what do I have? Oh, actually, I'm not even done with the overheads. Wait a minute, I have some inserts uh, going on here. Uh, Magneto, tape saturation, again, love saturation. It's pretty light, but it, it does help. Um, I just wanted to tame down the harshness of what I ended up with uh, with my room mics. Um, and that actually helps a lot. I added some compression. It's not something that I do all the time. 
but for this mix, I decided to try that out. Um, I blended um, I blended the compressor at 50%, so it works in parallel. So I always have the direct signal. So that's why I have like a very fast attack to chop off the transients of that sound. I'm just my goal was just to smooth the sound up. The release is at 178 milliseconds. Um, I'm using a very high ratio, so it's at this point it's kind of uh, it acts like a limiter. Um, but again. Again, I'm using the mix knob, so um, I get a very good blend. So let's have a quick listen to this uh, in solo. Okay, if I bypass the uh, inserts. Okay, and I finish that up with uh, an EQ. Uh, and again, th those decisions were made the more I went further in the mix. Uh, I always go back and tweak a few things, and this is what I ended up with. So I had to cut a bit of the top end uh, because it was a bit too harsh. Uh, now, as far as the room goes, again, I have a EQ, I think. Yes, I do. Uh, let me check here. Uh, okay, yeah, a, a cut... Uh, High pass and low pass filter and a bit of a cut at 500 hertz to get rid of that boxiness sound. And also a huge compressor going on, compressing the hell out of that sound. Um, again, I'm using the mix knob, so it works in parallel. And this is what I end up with. Now, it doesn't sound very good uh, on its own, but when you blend that with the rest of uh, the drum sound, Sounds pretty good. Now at this point, I'm gonna go check my compressor, the compressor I have on the drum bus. So I just brought down the input just a bit. Um, now what I want to do though is to add some more compression to this drum sound. Uh, I'm not going to use any compressors on the on the snare directly and on the kick uh, directly as well. I'm going to use a compressor as parallel processors. Okay, uh, so I'm going to have them on their separate tracks on an effects channel track. Anyways, um, th so I have two of them up to now. Um, so uh, let's look at what we have here, we have a quadrophase to add some saturation, then we have a bit of EQ uh, to get rid of, um, uh, of the low mid section, add a bit of, uh, of 100 hertz, and then we just compress uh, big time that signal. And we blend this with the snare and kick, because I'm sending into this channel, I'm sending the kick and the snare. Now the blend of uh, those two signals uh, going into this compressor um, creates a very cool vibe to be honest so let's have a quick listen uh, when we blend that with the actual snare and kick okay i'm going to have you listen to this compressor in solo without any direct signal It's quite heavy. <laughs> I kind of like that. All right. Uh, now let's look at the other parallel compressor channel. Uh, this time around, I'm using a tube compressor. I just wanted to try it. So fast attack, fast release. Uh, I added some drive and character. And uh, it's a low ratio, so it's mainly compressing instead of limiting. Uh, what I have going into this channel is the, um, the snare, the kick, overheads, and the room channel. I love parallel compression. This is something that I like to do a lot. Now I'm just gonna mute those two channels and have you listen to it before and after the parallel processing. Cool. 
Love it. Next, we're going to add some space to the sound by using reverence uh, to add a room vibe to our sound. Now, what I'm, sen what I'm sending in this reverb is a, a bit of a kick drum, um, some snare, and some overheads, and I think some room also. Yeah, exactly. So let's have a quick listen. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Um, next, I also have a big room. Um, now, I'm going to make a video specifically for this technique. It is a very cool technique if you want to create yourself a larger-than-life room, uh, room sound for your mix, especially if you're recording your drums in a small room. That is going to help a lot. Um, so this is what it sounds like on its own. if I blend it with the rest of the mix, but I'm first gonna bypass the first drum room. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna blend both together. Okay, it's getting there. Uh, now the last thing that I did here on this mix is I added a snare sample um, just to blend with my original snare. Um, I love the sound as it is, but I think with a sample, it's just gonna uh, bring the sound to the next level. So this is what I ended up with. Pretty cool. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. I love what that sounds like. Now it's just a matter of um, of blending this with the rest of the mix. Now let's have a before and after uh, with all the processing that I did on this mix and without the processing. Now the mix of this song is not quite over yet, uh, but I'm just gonna put you in context anyways uh, to have you listen to what the drum mix sounds like uh, within the mix. So there you go, it's always about the big picture. First, the drums as a whole, and then uh, the entire mix, the song itself. So from that point on, I'm gonna go and finish mixing this song, and of course, I'm probably gonna have to go back into the drum mix to tweak a few things around so everything fits better in the end. There you go, guys, this is how I mixed drums using stock plugins. Now, mixing drums is not a one-size-fits-all. Um, things are gonna change from song to song. It depends on the genre of music I'm mixing. Uh, the approach is gonna be different for for example, if I'm mixing a jazz piece or an indie rock piece compared to a pop song. So, but this is a general approach that I use myself. Uh, sometimes I need to do a bit more to, uh, to the mix for the drum mix to sound better. And sometimes I need to do less. Uh, sometimes I'm only gonna use a few plugins and there you go, uh, my drum sound is, is perfect for the mix. So it depends on what I'm mixing. It depends on the genre of music as well. All right, guys, so I hope that was helpful. If so, like and share. If you have any questions or comments, please leave everything down below. And if you're new here on the channel, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell. All right, guys, take care, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.